Welcome to another edition of Boots, Balls and Bras, straight off the back of the Lionesses win against Colombia. Um, Farah, it's great to see that when you're going out to Australia, you won't be passing them in the airport because they will still be there competing <laughs> in the competition. Um, but some early scares in terms of going down and, and I guess it just shows how the Lionesses have built this resilience as a team. We've talked about it time and time again around the mindset and what Serena's done since she's she's come in. The performances, I know you've got loads to say about that because you're cutting your eye and we'll get into it, but we're through to the next round. Excited? We are, we are. We are. I mean, I wasn't excited watching it, um, but excited that they're going to still be there when I arrive. Um was packing last night and this morning and literally I've got my Spain one already packed in there because they'd already qualified I've got but I had my <laughs> my England one on the side my France one on the side just waiting to see what one needs to go in next but yeah um look obviously delighted with the, with the result I think that's the most important thing I think as a fan I want us to win the World Cup and bring it home that's what we want right but as somebody that knows how good these players are and the expectation that they now have allowed us to have on them I think the performances have been really, really poor. I think uh, tactically we haven't really adapted in game. I've said it in, in, in other games. I felt again today we really struggled against a really good, aggressive Colombian team. I think Kira was non-existent in terms of she was isolated in there. You know, they really made that compact. We should have used that overload in central areas. We didn't. I felt like all of our build-up earth was really low. I felt like all in terms of attacks, in terms of entries and bodies into the box, again, didn't commit that many numbers. It was a bit cagey. It looked to me a little bit like how Japan set up yesterday. Um, in their game against Sweden, only when their backs were against it did they try and commit a little bit more. And I think that was what was frustrating. I, I understand that they're a bit cagey against these teams that are a lot more aggressive and obviously the transition, you know, a lot more direct. But I don't know, the performance wasn't there for me. The result was there. And that is the main thing, that they're in the semi-final against host nation. So that semi-final certainly is going to be unbelievable. Um, yeah. But this time, Earth, the Lionesses have to play in, so in front of a sold-out crowd that are going to be against them. 100%. And um, like we said, if we're looking on receipts in terms of performances, it still hasn't been hasn't mm. been great in terms of what we know the Lionesses can do both individually and collectively as a team. And like you said, Australia is definitely going to have the 12th woman on their side in terms of the crowd. And I don't know if they're even going to be able to hear each other in terms of communication. So they're going to have to let their football do the talking. And I guess I was thinking about this in terms of the teams that are still sort of left in the competition. We have three European teams um, and then obviously the host Australia making it through, which actually, if you think about it, most of their team plays in Europe anyway. Mm. So it, it's going to be a competitive game. And we, I don't think they're going to be able to ride off of just not having a, a good performance. I think they have to perform because I think if we look at Australia in terms of, we'll speak about it later, but penalty takers and like set pieces, they are going to be ready to upset the apple cart in terms of um, the European champions trying to come on their turf. We've seen what happens when it comes to like the ashes. We've seen oh. like how it's competitive, like all anything Australian, um, England is, is definitely competitive. And I think this is going to be absolutely no different. I just, I'm excited. We're going to have a new World Cup winner, which is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, there's something about me. I, I, I want the team that wins the World Cup to have played well. Mm. I like, as yeah. a football fan, I, I don't like... The whole point of having a World Cup is saying, I, we are the best collective team currently in the world and we deserve to be the champions. And I guess the reference I use to that is like when you think of the old like, male Brazilian teams, like they were super dominant. They were the best mm. team in the world. And yeah. I, don't, I don't want the luckiest team in the world to come through. I want the best team to win. But yeah. that's not how football goes, right? Of course, but you know what? It's 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 one of those earth. Like I feel like the impact, and I, I understand we've gone with a depleted squad, right? I'm just trying to look through the games, like when I think back through the groups and whatever. And I understand they have to do what they've got to do to get to get through, and they've done that. And mm -hmm. so, in terms of trying being negative about it, it's quite difficult to do that because at the end of the day, I'd take a result over any any performance mm -hmm. as a player. But for me, we've changed formation. And it worked against China for sure. It worked. It was it was something different. But I don't think it works. To, it worked against Nigeria. I certainly don't think it worked again today. And it's you think back to the Euros when we had uh, um, the super subs, whatever you want to call them, game changers, whatever you want to call them. We ain't got a game changer. This was my whole thing before the tournament. 
point me out on that bench a game changer somebody I mean Chloe Kelly I'd say but put, put, pick me out a player that's going to come off the bench and make impact they're not so we're having players that are literally leggy they're getting through the games they're leggy it hits 60 70 minutes they're, you can see the legs are like they're tiring and we ain't got that same energy that we we, we played with in the Euros where we bought five players on and it really kept the energy alive kept the intensity of our performances alive we struggled we, we literally intensity wise we struggled in today's game today's game massively but yeah. I mean look there's there's some positives I thought I thought Hemp and Russo I thought in terms of them both getting on the score sheet as strikers I thought it was good I think the fact that Russo scored the goal the winning goal that seen us through I think in terms of her confidence will do her the world of good she obviously mm -hmm. had a, a hand in the first goal um for us, I know both of their goals, both of our goals, were real mistakes from Colombia, the goalkeeper for the first, the centre half for the second. Yeah. Um, but we took our chances. I was in game earth, and I'm thinking, Rach, you know what, Rach Daly, I, I said she should play left back, but I've always wanted her to play left back where she could have something in front of her. Yeah, she can't play wing back as a right footed attack minded player because every time it gets switched out to that left hand side, she cuts infield. Oh, every time it's going out there, she's infield, and it's just stifling the attack. Whereas in game, I'm thinking, do you put Hempy out on the left hand side as a as a wing back just to get Daly up top, just so you got naturally left sided? So when we do break the Colombian line, when we did at times, we we'll still continue the momentum of the attack. I felt at times too much. At times we were coming back inside; it was really slow, and we just couldn't get players into the game. So yeah. that was frustrating. I, I think another option, and and you talked about just a minute ago around game changers. I know she hasn't had any experience, especially on the last day. Yeah, Robinson, man. Like, yeah, but you can't. But you can only play. You'll have to change the formation. That's what I'm saying. Like for me, I'm like we've stuck with this formation because of the the hype around the performance against China. We were brilliant in that China game, right? Mm -hmm. Without Kira in the team. Now in both of the games, Kira's been back. We haven't really been able to get her into the game in this formation. Mm -hmm. So that formation we played with the five, two, three, whatever you want to call it, right? With Katie Zellum in there, really helped her. Really yeah. helped Katie Zellum, right? Because she was allowed to be front foot aggressive. She didn't really get on the ball much. But what she did do, she was quite tidy. For Kira, who needs to be on the ball and dictate play, she's not getting involved with the ball. In both of the games, Nigeria, she weren't involved. And today, again, she weren't involved. Does this formation suit our key player, which is Kira? When mm -hmm. you think about our attacks and where they come from, it comes from her. So if this formation don't suit Kira, right, you don't play her. Or you go back to the formation that suits her and where she can dominate performances and put her back in there. I don't understand why you'd play a formation where our key players aren't impacting the game from it. Like yeah. she struggled. She needed somebody alongside her. You heard in commentary, Emma Hayes is crying out for it. I'm sat here on the couch like somebody, like it's standby, come a little bit lower, get mm. closer to her because we needed to get her into the game. If any of our attacks are to come from deep, they come from her. And yeah. both of yeah. these games in this new formation don't suit Kira. And I think it's something that um, Serena Wiegmann after this game needs to go away and think about before we go into that Sweden game. So really, you heard it here from it. You need to go and go and think about it. Alpha, come on. I'm like, tell me, tell me. You, you, you see the impact. You see our team set up when we play Kira in there, right? When we play a 4 3 3 and Kira's in there, she's so impactful with and without the ball. Mm. She finds right? it. But in this formation, we haven't been able to get her involved in the game. She's had limited impact in, against Nigeria and against Colombia. So I'm asking a question Does the formation not suit her, or does she need to do more in the formation to impact the game? I'm just throwing it out. I don't know. That have answers, I, I and of course she's coming back up an injury, right? So we don't know the extent of the injury. Yeah, yeah. I think Serena would say the latter, and the coaching staff would say the latter in in terms of like just try and find the space. Which I think we've got to give credit to the other teams. They're just the way that they're they're playing. They're setting up well, knowing that is the key for England, and they're going to always try to unlock it. And they're doing everything, I guess, in terms of focusing on that. And I don't think England are bypassing it. Can they? Have they got the personnel to bypass that and actually say, we know that teams are going to be setting up for this exact thing. We're not being able to work it and, and find a way to get Kira on the ball. What is that next phase of play? What is our what is our alternative? What's the contingency plan? Or is there you not know just keep running around, going from side to side, trying to find that key? We do the same thing that we're right? We try and break the lines of the ball on the floor all of the time. All of our passing is trying to break lines on the floor. Right. When I look at Colombia today, they found a way to dink it over. Like they, they, I just look like they were in a cage, mate. They look like they was in a cage. I'm watching them like in tight areas, tight, 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 and they lift it over your head. Mm -hmm. They're lifting it over you, so you can't even, you, you have to do so. You have to handle it or foul or whatever. We try and pass between lines if gaps aren't even there. And that's our problem. We force things. You ain't got the creativity to dink between lines or play longer and play off the front. Like that's we don't do that unless it goes from really bright with a big diagonal. Who's getting on the ball and lifting the ball into areas with detail on the pass? You look at France's goal. Uh, yesterday was it yesterday or sorry? The who did they play against Morocco? 
where uh, Renard, she dinked it into the line into Dali, she helps it on and they get themselves in the box, create chances, score goals. Like Japan do it. You've got to be able to play between lines in different ways other than trying to break it through the floor. And we ain't, we ain't shown that detail yet. Uh, and I guess if they say, if it's not broken, then... <laughs> Don't fix it. <laughs> don't bore me. Don't bore me with this, this, this cliche this talk. I understand that. Well, but this is tournament football. They are at a tournament to win a tournament. So they are uh, going to... did the Colombian keeper get tested today? Not at all. I mean, the one well, the one goal she had to save was the one uh, Rousseau's goal, but the other one she fumbled. That yet weren't even a shot. Uh, Hemby's goal weren't even a shot. Yeah. She fumbled it herself. It was just an, an, an easy take right on the half as well. Literally ruined them. Mm. But I'm just saying, maybe got tested. Maybe again saved us. At two one, that save yeah. into the top bins. The okay, goal. I know she got love for the first goal in her position, and people are going to talk about it. But she kept us in the game again. Yeah, hundred percent. And I told again. you, it'll be a, game, it'll be a, game, a tournament of, of keepers' performances. I'm just going to repeat that. Again. Good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> Good, bad, or indifferent. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. there was uh, two mistakes today. Don't forget. Uh, but there was many positives that we we can take from that as well. But yeah, I think for Australia, I think they're going to. I personally think they're going to go back to their original formation. I think they, I think the players will feel more comfortable in that rather than trying something new. Who did you take out, though, Earth? Who did you take out? Jess mm -hmm. Carter, 1v1 defending today, was brilliant. Again, superb. Don't get yeah. me wrong, she was beaten a little, a couple of times in the early, in the early, in the really early stages of the game. Casado got an advance of her, whatever. She didn't gauge her distance to get close. But once she got that, Earth, she was very good again. Yeah. I think she's... And, she's and isolated in her yeah. defending. She'll still, be the one, she'll still be the one taken out, just purely from history like, and what's been, what's gone on. Like, if, she's got, if they're going to pick someone, they're go it, it's going to be her. Mm. Like, perform like, forget about performances now. We're setting up and preparing for this next game. Not on a motion of, yeah, you played really well. And, like, actually... No, 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 I know. It's personnel. You have, to, you have to play what you have to play. I'm just... Do you play a left-back? Do you play a left-back? Take daily out. Is that an option? <laughs> Because no. defensively, when you think really, like when Daly played at, at wing back, she doesn't really have to defend. Who knows? Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they take. I think Daly stays in. I think Jess comes out if, mm -hmm. if we're gonna. Yeah, just kind of shut. Just and then Chloe Kelly in. Can Chloe Kelly in? Mm. And then you have to look it's at interesting what they do. I mean, she's one of days, isn't she? She's a creature of habit. Like she wants to keep it the same once it works. She did it with a four three three for for all of her time. Surprisingly, she changed to this formation, and now I don't see her changing back. Yeah, but at a time when your performances ain't pulling you through the game, you've got to revert back to that. So you've, you've she got wouldn't have gone to this formation. Had Kira not get, got injured, this formation wouldn't have come alive for England. But they would have practiced it, and they would have been ready for it. It's some, it would have been in their armour. It would have been. They wouldn't have just done that because I know they haven't prepared for Kira not to be mm. like former lionesses and that have said, but. That they would have had an alternative. They would have had a contingency plan. Mm. Trust me. Teachers don't just go with one plan. We always oh, all... come on. Teacher talk. Jesus. <laughs> you do. You used to just make me copy off the blackboard all the time in school. And that's why I'm so stupid. Oh my God, what, I used to be like, what are we doing, miss? Just copy this. Okay, but I can't take it in. I don't know what I'm like. I'm like looking at the board, not even learning to spell uh, writing. That's... You're talking about grain chill days. We do differentiation now. Oh. There's so much different things that we wow, do. Wow, I, I need to go back to school now then. Well, I'll see if I can play to you <laughs> at, at my school. But looking you. forward, definitely looking forward to semi-finals. Um, oh, man, that's going to be big for us. I can't wait. This is, it. this is the make or break. You're literally counting down. You've now got mm. two more games. Like, well, you take one game at a time. You've got to get through the next one, and then it's 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 all or nothing. This so. is ours to this is ours to lose. I've said it oh. since all these teams have gone out. It's ours to lose, but that comes with pressure. Mm -hmm. That comes with big pressure. But Australia. Uh, what about um, sweet, uh, Spain? Spain and Sweden final. Spain, oh. man, is scraped for in the end against uh, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the oh. Netherlands scored a late equaliser, and then obviously Spain got one in extra time. But that was a good game. Spain, the furthest they've ever got in a tournament before, semi-finals. With half a squad. The of the players. Eh? With half a squad. Exactly, with a, with a weakened squad as well. It's mad, isn't it? Uh, uh, um, I think that's that's going to be down to Spain being prolific in taking their chances and how well Sweden do with their set pieces. I think the mm. high advantage is going to be a, a massive positive for Sweden, uh, but they can also play, which is, which is great. Mm. So unless... 
Spain turn up and do the business, Sweden, I think, will will see it over the Sweden night. just they can defend Earth. They're so compact defensively, like they're so well organized defensively. They're hard to break down. I think Spain will be able to break them down. I think mm -hmm. the only goal they conceded wasn't it against Africa, uh, South Africa in the opening game. Mm -hmm. Sweden they haven't conceded many goals, and obviously oh, they conceded yesterday. But Japan really struggled. Yeah. Uh, to break them down, which is frustrating. But I think Spain, as you say, they have to be clinical. I think they'll be able to break them down and create chances. It's whether they're clinical or not. Yeah. Saw Japan yesterday, they weren't. So, And then I, I think for Sweden, they have to stick to their strengths, direct, mm -hmm. set pieces, and, and dominate in that way rather than trying to be something they're not, which I don't think they would. I think mm -hmm. they'll be like, this is us. Um, but Black Stenius Earth. Did you watch the game? Oh. The striker the, that couldn't, uh, that's that goal. I don't know how, I think it's harder to miss, no? I think it was harder to miss. At least <laughs> harder to miss the target. Oh my gosh. But it's another chance on the world stage. Yeah, for them. Against Espanyol. And Jonas, Jonas would be buzzing, Arsenal manager, with all his uh, Arsenal players still involved. What, what, so they don't have to, so they're almost doing pre season. Pre season, yeah. <laughs> Can't be yeah. Forward, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so on to our second half, and we got to talk about the twenty penalties <laughs> that right. that we saw uh, this morning between France and Australia. I, we we were messaging right Farrell during the game, and I think I called it straight away in terms of I said Australia is definitely winning this, and it's not because I didn't believe in France. I just think when I watch France and the way that they play. And the way that they pass the ball, it just, it's too, I don't know, like flary. It's so too much. They just, yeah. yeah. It's just, this, there's like no real. That's right. The penalties were poor. They Let's were be bad. honest. They were poor. Like, I'm reading people go, oh, it's such an exciting penalty. Show. Exciting. <laughs> the, the, the technical, like, it was poor. Mm. Technically, like, penalties, the penalties were really, really bad, in my opinion. Even the ones that went in, like, they were really soft. Like, yeah. A couple of them was really, really soft. I was really disappointed with it. I mean, don't get me wrong, for a neutral, it's like, oh, but it's like, you really missed that? Have you missed that? Have you really executed like that? I'm just sitting there thinking, it, I don't think it was a it was a good penalty shootout. It was obviously, and to be fair, on on the basis of the game, I don't even know who should have gone through. Yeah. It was no. a tough one. I thought they both equally, it was probably as even as it could have get. I would love to have seen a golden goal. <laughs> Literally. I was thinking, please don't go to penalties. I actually, what, yeah, I wanted someone to score and, and get it through because I just mm. knew that, the, like you said, the technicality of the penalties wasn't great. And even in terms of some of the, the goalkeeping, like some of them got a hand to it. Like some, I don't know if they was trying to catch one of those exercise um, big balls that you... The medicine ball. <laughs> you know, the, the bigger ones, the ones that you kind of feel... Oh, they're like the yoga. I don't even know what they are. The ballet, I don't even know what they are. I know what you mean. Yeah, I was like, wow, how how yeah. wide you your hands? But yeah, it was Australia, obviously, who came out on top. And I thought, actually, I, I thought I, I was going to be wrong. When, and then Arnold stepped up and hit the post. And I was like, guys, why is Arnold taking the penalty now? Even though the, the, she could see her name written up in light she's made save she's now taking the penalty and she's tried to open her body up like Henri and it clicked the post and I think then France definitely believed I think I was more impressed with the reactions on the sideline especially the goalie from, from well the French goalkeeper <laughs> literally from the French goalkeeper and some of the players they were keep they were keeping me more entertained than yeah, same. The players that were, were coming up but Again, it comes down to it. There's players who... Do we need to prepare the whole squad to be ready to take a penalty? 100%. The first part... It doesn't, just, it, it doesn't just come down to that. It's like... It, it's the pressure of it. Erfa, they were walking up to the penalty like they were going to vomit on the spot. <laughs> like, I was like, are you okay? Like, you can see this. Like, their <laughs> mouth was dry. To, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know they've just played a game, but they were like nerves. Like, they were spitting feathers, bruv. It was too much. They were nervous, all of them. So even like your main key penalty, Catley, look how good she was with her uh, penalties. Mm. Her penalty execution was poor when it mattered. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah, I do. I don't think you can, I, look, I think you can do repetition of penalties and I think it's important that you do that. And I think it's important that you have a routine for your penalty so you can get into your zone and that nothing around you impacts you. But yeah, I think everybody has to take a penalty, but I just don't think you can ever prepare yourself for um, the pressure of, scoring or missing a penalty 
at a major tournament that's going to send your team home or through. I don't think you can prepare yourself. I think you can visualize all these things and whatever, but as long as you're in your in your mindset mm. and your as I said your routine is correct and and you execute, like Darley, uh, one of the most technically gifted players in our league, the penalty was such a letdown. Yeah. I was really disappointed. That's, That's what I'm saying. She got a retake. I know. She got a retake. Compose yourself. If she had a routine, if she was a naturally pen a penalty taker, she would have had a routine to recompose herself. She she clearly not a penalty taker. Hence why she did the exact same thing and rushed it. Didn't even take a moment. Yeah. In a quick, so a quick question. Does does your penalty routine change whether it's an in-game penalty or if it's a knockout penalty at the end? Or, or do you just, it still stays the same? I think the routine stays the same. My okay. routine would stay the same. Now, I'm not saying that the pressure don't heighten. Of course it does. The pressures are different with that. Mm. But you have to stay in that zone of knowing, okay, this is my routine. I place, I do whatever, whatever, whatever. Breathe, take a moment from the whistle. Like you don't need to you don't need to take the penalty straight away. Do you, you're not gonna get carded for a delay on a penalty. Like you're not gonna they're not gonna book you. Take your take your time, compose yourself, and just think about execution. You don't need to look anywhere else. The goal's not moving. Mm. And I'm not talking like I'm an expert. I miss plenty of penalties, important yeah. penalties. I missed the penalty in the semi-final of the FA Cup, they're not deserved. I'm just talking. And that was without preparation. So what I'm saying, when I when I had preparation, when I started to use preparation. It was easier to to feel comfortable in taking penalties. It's so it's so funny because even like for me the routine of taking the penalty, I always go back. Not, sorry, sorry. Thinking about the penalty, I'm getting dry mouth. I'm <laughs> 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 getting dry. I, um, <laughs> I go back to my um my routine of when I was like, I'm talking nine ten at my local sports center. And we, our coach, who say, when you take a penalty, you've got to put the ball down, you've got to take a certain amount of steps backwards. You take, and I literally zone out back to that smelly gym sports hall. And that's, and I'm literally still, I'm just in that zone. Take but I'm, so I don't know what it's like to be on the world stage where you've maybe got like 70,000 people booing, hissing, doing other stuff, if, if that will then change. But like you said, the routine and to be able to block it out is, is the most important thing. And, that preparation before. I'm assuming as a national team and the best in the world in terms of your country, you would have those basic things, those lines. If they haven't, they better be doing it now. They better go there right to the right to their training ground now and practice from now until the England game because that could be another one that potentially could go to penalties given mm. the history of the teams. So, so, so talking about that, we, we talked about the, the penalties and we're into our semis now. What we're saying, who's 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 going through? Who's who's going through to that final? England Spain final. England Spain final. No hesitation. No, but I'm taking both shirts, and whoever wins, I'm wearing it at the final oh, whistle because okay. I I ain't supporting the losing team. <laughs> so what do you think? England England's going to be just too much for Australia, even as a home nation. You reckon? Payback. They beat us before we come out. They're the team that broke the record. So we have we have to have a little bit about us. We was obviously had a weekend, a little bit of a weekend team in that in that game as well. Mm -hmm. um, but our head to head against Australia isn't great. But I don't want to look at that. Yeah, and I've brought it up, but I don't want to look at it. It's just um, a, it's a new game. I think it's everyone yeah. has gone before. I don't know why. I don't. They're not better than us. They're not better than us. They're a team that we should be beating. But. We have to execute. We have to up our levels. We can't. We, we won't beat them if we play at the level we played at today and, and in, in an Nigeria game. For sure, we won't beat them at that but, level. But have they been performing? We didn't, beat them at, we didn't beat them at that level. When we played them um, at, what's it called, Brentford. So we didn't beat them at the level we're at now because this is the level that we were playing. When we played that friendly against Australia, we played at the same level we're playing at now and we didn't beat them. So if we go in that, to the game at that same level in, of intensity and quality, we won't beat them again. I think we played so, a bit at Brentford. Maybe. <laughs> Which Maybe. means I'm thinking, yeah, just con I think the cons I don't know. I think if anyone, if out of all the teams that are in, if anyone's going to like capitalize on us not having our foot on the pedal out of all the teams that's left in, I'd say it'd be Australia. I think that's the worst team yeah. as a whole nation because England would know exactly what it feels like to have the nation behind you. Now they're going to be the, the ones that I see it on the other foot mm. and it'll, it'll be interesting to, to see the psychology behind that in terms mm. of like they know what it's like the benefits of it and not having that and not performing well and been scraping through the world cup like mm. how, like this is really with the point where they say 
you have to find a, like let's see if you can find a way or otherwise it's it's home time and obviously well without Lauren James again for one more game um so lucky it, we didn't take a booking in this game today I was I was impressed we had five players all signing in a booking so yeah, the fact yeah. that we got through the game without a booking is impressive so everyone, everyone's still available, which is what a final. Which, get there, yeah. That's what you want, though. You want the best team. You want everyone available. You want sure. them all, all competing um, for the title. But I'm thinking Spain. So you're going Spain, definitely beating Sweden. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that game. Well, it shouldn't go to penalties. I think there's far too much talent and creativity. I don't. You know what though? If 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 what's it called? Sweden a direct against Spain. They got they could cause them problems. I think both I think both semi finals are gonna be tight to call. Yeah. Mm. Have you got a Sweden shirt? No. Okay, so that means Spain's definitely going through. So yeah. Spain, England final. Um I I think I'm I'm going with you on that one as well. But I don't know. I've still got something about you've got, you've yeah. got Australia on your head. I've got I don't know, I've got Australia. Are you gonna, are you gonna put it out there? Or are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna bag out? I'm going I'm going Australia. Okay, against Australia against Sweden. Of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> no, Australia against Spain. hundred percent. No, you said Sweden now. No, Australia that's my don't give me a chance, please. Okay. Australia against Spain finals and Spain to to win. Overall, mm. that's what that's where I'm going. He's coming home, Murph. He's coming home. Well, if it does come home, I will definitely be excited about that, and I'm sure we will yeah. have an upgrade from the parade at Trafalgar Square. Um, so. Maybe it'll be a bit bigger. Maybe we can still get the jerk pan out, even though Jamaica hasn't yeah, come yeah. through. We can help organise that. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Fish and chips. <laughs> Scampi and fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, help me! It's too early for this. I'm tired from them two games. They literally drained the life out of me. Oh well, you hit her first. Farrah thinks it's going to be a Spain England final. I think it's going to be an Australia Spain final. Um, so Spain's definitely going through both of us. And you know how our predictions have been so far because both of <laughs> our teams have gone out of the World Cup. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to the next set of games. Uh, Farrah will be joining us from Oz and she will be maybe doing some pop-ups. So please have a look out for, I guess, the boots, balls and bras handles. Um, Farrah might be going live. Um, we're going to have some interactions with the fans and maybe some former players, etc. Or maybe not. Um, you might just see Tumbleweed and me. Um, but yeah, you might, you might see me practicing my swimming in uh, in the beach, you know, to get my blue Peter badge. Ah, to get your blue <laughs> Peter badge. I was, it's so funny when you said it. I was like, oh, I've got a blue Peter badge, so oh. I'm ahead of you. I'm ahead of you as well, Farrah, on that. I've yeah, yeah. Badge. You're stealing a blue Peter badge. Um, I'm gonna try. No, it. I didn't steal it. You know, I didn't steal it. It was a fake one anyway. It's a so I, I, I just started the BBC. It was a fake one. It wasn't even real. Oh, there we go. Otherwise, that would have been in my pocket, and it would have been back here with me, and I would have been showing it off today. Ah, oh, sounds sounds about right. Yeah. Anyway, so mm. well, I'm gonna find. Actually, I might find my blue Peter badge and put it on for the. Oh, for the of course you Of course you would. <laughs> of course you would. Put on your shirt. I'll put, it on, I'll put it on my shirt. I put my little blue Peter badge there. Um, yeah, but yeah, we will. Don't forget to send your questions yeah. in. Um, interacting with our our handle. So, uh, on to our fans question. We have a few in. Um, pretty much most of the questions were the same, asking a little bit about the lineup against Australia. We kind of touched on that in the pod itself, so listen to that if you want to hear um, our thoughts on that. But there's a question here from Kez underscore Mason underscore, and it said, should Serena be making more substitutes and faster, question mark, even just to waste time in added time? What's your thoughts? Um, uh, for me, I, I think we've definitely got some quality on the bench that, could come into the game and perform as well, if not better than the performances that we've already had. So I don't think there's any disadvantage to bringing players in because our performances have been so bad. But I'm not a person that thinks, oh, let's just do it 
just to do it and to waste time. Mm. I think we're past that in terms of a, a country and where we are with our football, where actually we were going to win tournaments and medal and not really focusing on things that were like impact, like time wasting or stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't see that as something that Serena will have at the forefront of her mind in terms of where we are as a as a as a country. But you might think different, Faz. No, I agree. I don't. I, the time wasting stuff. I think yeah, you can do that in game, and obviously we've seen you can't time waste with substitutions anymore because you're going to end up playing 120 minutes in a 90 minute game. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of that, no. In terms of making more substitutions in game, I think we have to. I think mm -hmm. we have to. I think we can't. Whether that is a trust thing, I don't know what it is. But we're so I'm so used to seeing this team have impact subs that keep the game fresh and keep the intensity high, and we haven't seen enough of it. And I think you can see players start to tire, decision-making starts to then then change and obviously then the quality then falls a little bit with that. So I would like to see more subs used in the right way, not just for the sake of making a sub, um, mm. but definitely given the impact they had last summer. Yeah, I definitely, like I said in the pod, I think I definitely would like to see Robinson feature at, at some point if in terms of a, an attacking player. So hopefully we can see that. Cool. Thank you for your questions, guys. Guys, between now and Wednesday, I'm going to put it out there. Any questions you want to ask about the tournament? Um, anything you're thinking in between that, VAR? You know, I know I've got a lot to say about that in this tournament. Don't think it's been used very well. It was used very well at the start. Throw your questions at us. It gives us more to talk about, more engagement. Thank you. Adios. Ciao.